Hey everybody, Brian Von VA here. I have a serious question for you. Have you ever decided that, hey, I want to get out of trouble as a kid and I'm going to just do this really crazy tactic and oh my God, it worked. Or as an adult, you get caught slacking off at work by your boss. You're thinking, oh God, how can I make it up an excuse so wild and so out there that I can get away with it? Well, today we're exploring that in D&D. So what's your best holy crap it worked moment part two? And yes, we had to censor the crap part because YouTube hates all of us. So, let's commence. My party and I were sent to fight a cult in the sewers. One of the party members suggests sending in their water elemental and destroying the bridge that led to their headquarters. But we had to be sure there weren't other ways to escape. They choose me, a fighter who has minus one to charisma and disadvantage to stealth, to put on the uniform of a cultist we took out before because I was the only member of the party the mask would fit on. Oh, this can't go well. I go in with the party and loosely tied ropes as prisoners. We run into a cultist right off the bat. I fail a deception check and the druid decides to turn into a giant badger and attack him, killing him. This brings out the second in command and he sees me and one of his henchmen getting mauled. He asks me what's happening and I tell him that my new pet I brought back from the recon mission broke free. I somehow pass this deception check and then grapple the druid to sell the bit but then he transforms into a small lizard, climbs the walls and escapes, leaving me and the party behind. The second in command then asks me what's going on and I say, I never said he was my pet badger, he's my pet shapeshifter. Roll for deception, nat 20. The guy completely believes me and everyone at the table is in shock. There was just one problem with my deception being as good as they were. I actually convinced them that I was one of them to the point where when I tried to run away to get back to the party, the second in command thought I was leading a charge and commanded all 60 cult members to follow me. Oh no. The town above was destroyed and I was made a dark general of the enemy for two more sessions. Luckily, no players were killed. One time, my younger brother and I were playing the board game version of D&D with my dad and he was about to turn us into toads. We used a deflection to make him turn into a toad instead. We rolled a 20, and my dad was a toad for the rest of the game. No matter how many times he tried to turn himself back into a human, he kept rolling a 1, so he stayed a toad, which annoyed him immensely. We entered a cave with a flaming skull floating in it, surrounded by corpses. Sounds like a good time. We had a good idea that this was pretty dangerous for our level 3 characters, and spent a long while discussing what to do. We thought we were being pursued, so going back was a uh, danger in itself. In the end, I sent my storm sorcerer in and tried to talk to it in primordial, since, hey, it's made of fire, right? right? Uh, the DM ran with it. Turns out the flame skull was lonely, with only zombies for friends, and had been missing intelligent conversation since the wizard who created it died. Oh, well, I kind of feel bad for the little skeleton boy now. Third edition, playing Claret. Towards the end of a long, difficult fight, pretty much all spells gone and in a relatively bad position. Throughout the low-level command spell, about the only thing I had left, had the remaining batty right before his turn. Command has a horribly low DC due to his level, and the guy wasn't a pushover. But he botched the save, fell asleep or something to that effect, and lost his turn. Which was all we needed to smash him and win the day. The party was trying to devise a plan to break into a vault and steal an item we were contracted to acquire. Me, being a plain, hopping, chaotic, neutral warlock, got bored with the planning and just shifted to the ethereal. Rolled well enough to make it to the vault and shift back. Rolled perception and quickly snatched the item, enchanted necklace if I remember correctly, and shifted back to the ethereal. Rolled well enough to make it out again unnoticed. All this was done as a sidebar while the other players were trying to make a plan. I just shouted, got it, and held up the necklace in character. <laughs> the DM confirmed, yeah, he just stole it. I'm a little annoyed because that heist was going to be most of the session. <laughs> <laughs> My second edition game, Nat 20 on a called shot. I tried to shoot the flying dragon in the eye with my enchanted arrow. Rolled to see the special result. Catastrophic damage, aka a kill shot. So much for the DM's well-planned final battle. It was over in two rounds. 
My Gulak half-elf was told by his patron to locate some powerful artifacts and send them to my patron by covering them with an enchanted black cloth. The rest of my party only know about one of the artifacts, which we are all still fighting over because most of us have a god who wants it, but I know about some others. One of the others was a legendary sword on an island that only appears at night. When my party found this island, we all decided to explore it, and I, of course, took the cloth with me because I knew an artifact would be there. Well, we arrived and the sword must have belonged to a titan in its past life because it was huge. Only the pommel was visible poking out of the top of an obsidian pyramid covered in abyssal writing and intricate puzzles that the DM had clearly spent a lot of time on. My gulak quickly used his winged boots to fly to the sword's pommel. The DM started re-describing the circular puzzles surrounding it. I place a cloth over the pommel. Uh, what? Uh, make an attack roll? 25. The entire sword vanished, and the island began to fall apart. Luckily, we all made it back to our ship and sailed off before anyone was hurt. The party was none the wiser. I completed my mission and had a hilarious conversation with my patron later, and I still feel kind of guilting about wasting the three hours that our fantastic DM put into designing the island. The pyramid, and probably a kick-ass backstory for the sword, that we will sadly never find out about. I convinced a town guard to let me go by claiming he was just dreaming. We had to break into a warehouse to rescue children. After killing all the slavers, the guard arrives. I tried to tell them that it was self-defense and that they were trespassing. Eh, unsuccessful. I kind of just blurted out in desperation, Yeah, true, but none of this matters because it's all a dream. Nat 20. Dreamception. I had a combat for my players in a ruined ballroom with chandeliers and old automatons playing broken music. It was just some goblins in there, but the party decided to, instead of fight them, use magic to dim the lights, and then challenge them to a dance battle. Several checks for various dance moves later, and the goblins walk out of the room defeated. All right, I have to make this a quick one since I have to work soon, but... My fellow party members are a bunch of murder hobos. Oh, God. An NPC came around, they punished the party members who had been rude to him, and after the battle begins healing everyone, including a spell scroll to restore someone he accidentally maimed. What do my fellow party members do? They kill him, because at this point, he's low health, even though he's likely someone important, and he doesn't seem to be a terrible person. Now, I did a one-shot a while back with the same people, where this military was trying to forcibly enlist an entire town of men, women, and children into their army. The farming town, consisting mostly of prejudiced elves, snubbed the party members a couple of times. What does the party do? Reasonably, they attack the town and enslave everyone, then sit on a ledge and watch the entire town of farmers and their families get slaughtered in a war they had no part in. So, kind of as a change of pace, I'm playing a pacifist in a different campaign now. She's a cleric who heals, but refuses to do lethal damage, and resists doing damage at all in most scenarios. It's written on her sheet that over-excessive violence makes her physically ill. I'm low-key going necromancer with animals with her, but we're not there yet. Her backstory is pretty much that she was raised in a family of evil cultists exposed to great darkness and was definitely not cut out for it, so she left in the night to try and make a new life. Some funny moments are speaking with animals mid-battle, to barter with birds and squirrels, to have them defecate on the enemy from trees above for rations. Repeating terrifyingly evil enchantments she's learned from her family experience in Infernal to intimidate other enemies into fleeing for their lives. They're harmless without proper rituals. Making an offhand backstory comment in the presence of a captured NPC. The DM had me roll to intimidate, and now my pacifist, nature-loving cleric seems to succeed at bluffing their way through any situation with intimidation. And a poor bandit needs to steal some new pants. Can't believe it worked. Werewolf the Apocalypse game. We don't actually see a lot of this, and we want to see more. We came to a hallway entrance under stealth, and saw four guards with machine guns. Long, narrow space, Four fully automatic weapons, not a good situation. My character could use great element, 
our DM allowed me to spend successes, D10 multi-dice throw system, to modify what I created. I threw eight successes, so I told him that I created four cubic feet of fire and spent three success spells to split it into four pieces and spent the last success to compress the fire and heat into the size and shape of the guards' machine guns magazines. My party was shocked as I turned as miserable a situation into <laughs> guards go boom situation. Hey everybody, Brian here, back at it again, checking in after the vid as per usual. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and to ring that bell for notifications if we post or go live. If you want to catch us ultra live though, do so on our Twitch. And if you want to see some fun, wacky, one-off little things that are 30 to 60 seconds long, go on our TikTok. You can see the links in the description below. If you have a story you'd like to submit to us, you can do so on our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. And of course, if you want to come say hi to me, you can do so on any social media. Just find me at Brian Von BA. Simple as that. As always, I try to end things on a positive note. Today is no different. Instead of just whipping out some positive quote or something, I actually kind of want to get to know you guys a little bit more, like I usually do. And this is a question that I've probably asked once in the past, but I'd like to ask again. What is something, and you can answer in the comments, I really just want to get to know you guys. We get to know my audience, get to know the people that love, you know, hearing the story here and just enjoys being around. What is your favorite smell? A smell that doesn't have to be a flawless odor, something that it's not, it doesn't have to be like something like great, like a, you know, the fresh rain or whatever. But what is your favorite smell of all time? It could be a skunk spray if you really like that. I like it, so there's that. But my favorite actually is the scent of fresh rain. I forget what it's called, but I love that smell. It's probably my, my favorite smell that actually exists in nature itself. And it brings me back to my childhood quite often. And it brings me back to my most imaginative states. So I want to know what smell in your mind actually makes you just so happy, so uh, invigorated, something that's just your favorite smell. Just tell me about your favorite smell. That's all I want to know. And I will be responding to as many comments as I can. All the love, be safe, be happy, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.